Um, yeah, so I, I like this chart by uh, I got three. Um, I, I have another kind of understanding of kind of dichotomy uh, that I've understood the internet through, kind of like this one. Um, I think it's been there since the beginning. I'm, I'm borrowing from Jacob Willemos to, to describe this, but um, I think there's always been a kind of uh, a desire among artists who are using the internet to understand it both uh, technologically, so Gene was talking about the nuts and bolts and things like that, uh, and then also to understand it socially, to understand the kind of ways in which people uh, have a discourse through it. Um, and so, for example, this, this manifests itself in, in, in two separate kinds of conceptual art. So you have uh, the technological art is often one that's systems-based, that's algorithmic, that, uh, that shows or displays the kind of code underneath the internet structure. Uh, I'm thinking of you know, things like Jody or uh, Rachel Baker's desktop is exhibitions. Um, and then you have things that are social. You have uh, artists who are trying to intervene in the social lives of people on the internet and, and the way that they use it to communicate. Um, so, for example, things like uh, the 90s projects by eToy, um, things like uh, Heath Bunting's um, interventionary projects where you, you know, arrange uh, uh, situations for people to use the public telephones uh, in London through the internet. Um, so you have this kind of economy, and I think that that still exists today, where people are, are using the internet or using software in general as a means to generate these kind of uh, formalist or more, more visually representative uh, works on the internet, and then you have people who are using the internet as a, as a kind of means for political or social or something else like that um, that's more interventionary. Uh, and I think that, that this, this, this is something that exists in the beginning and it still exists today, but one thing that's changed from the beginning to today are the means through which uh, the participants of the internet organize themselves, um, the kind of systems and networks that they're a part of. Uh, I think that these, these have actually undergone a great change. Um, internet art has always, by necessity, uh, required a kind of social interaction. Um, if you Googled art in 1993, you probably wouldn't be taken to you know, the latest internet art thing. Uh, so there's always a need for a kind of community building uh, that was inherent in internet art, and, and it still is. Um, so in, in, in the early days, I think that a lot of the kind of organizational structures that the internet was based around, whether it's NetTime, 7-Eleven, Rhizome, whatever, um, these things were all <coughs> artists run, in some sense, or, or art administrative, or art theoretical, or whatever. Uh, somebody related to the field of art was running the uh, means of communication that artists would display and validate their work through one another. Um, there, there, there was a shift, though, that occurred, and, and, and we can think of this in terms of the dot-com boom uh, as, as marking the beginning of Web 2.0. Um, you can think about this as the social web, uh, but eventually the, the kind of social means of the internet um, became incre increasingly corporatized uh, in the sense that you know Facebook is a company. Blogspot is run by Google, it's a company. Um, uh, but, but they also started to serve different means, which were to uh, either generate profit or to uh, generate users, um, and more and more you know, average, everyday people type of users. Um, so I think that, that in, in a means to kind of, uh, and, and I think that, that this isn't all bad, right? I'm not saying like, oh, you know, bad corporate guys, Gene described him, is, is, is taking us down. I think a lot of artists were trying to use Blogspot and Tumblr, and still do, um, tactically, as Gear Loving would say. They're trying to use uh, something that was not made for them to their own ends. Uh, and I think that's an admirable thing. Um, I don't think that, that, it's, it, that it, it can always work. I don't think that all ends can be met through something that's not met, that, that's not created for the intention that you're using it for. Um, so, <clears throat> I think that that there, there's been a kind of shift uh, where artists are now trying to establish networks, or systems, uh, I call them productive systems, uh, where they're trying to kind of retake the means through which their art is delivered to an audience um, in, in ways that are separate from the kind of prevailing norms of something like Blogspot or Tumblr or whatever. Uh, so that's kind of what I do as an artist, or that's what I, I think I try to do. Um, and I don't know, should I show some Show a project or sure. So um, here's yeah. Um, as you're showing us a project, can you um, try to <clears throat> relate it back to Zora's sort of framing question of how does the internet artist reflect on internet and just um, like think about what you're doing in relation to a particular medium on the internet or um, some, some sort of fundamental structure of the internet that you're sort of bouncing oh, sure. all this off of. Yeah, definitely. 
Definitely. So um, I'll just show this one. This is the most recent one. I might I mentioned another one too. Uh, this is a website called Blind Mist, and I made this with excuse me, uh, John Vigiano. Um, and, and he knows how to program and do technical things. And I'm more on the the media theory kind of end of it in terms of propositions for him. But um, so this website is called Blind Mist, and uh, this website was intended uh, to be a means that that, that showed art. Uh, as an alternative to the kind of prevailing norm of aggregating blogs. Um, the idea of aggregating blogs being that uh, a specific voice is formed uh, throughout the kind of uh, the stream or the history of a blog's existence, that uh, there's kind of a curatorial standard that's set, um, and that this, this kind of eventually leads to a certain kind of balkanization of readership, of viewership, where uh, you know, you do the abstract painting blog, and the people who like abstract painting follow your blog, and uh, that's it. And then, you know, this kind of great tool of the internet, uh, which is, you know, idealistically talked about as being a, a tool for openness and, and, and widespread communication, becomes uh, sucked into a little corner, right? And so, with blindness, we're trying to think of a tool for uh, art on the internet that could maybe re-expand that corner. They could take a bunch of different corners and introduce them to one another. Um, and and uh, to do so in a way that was not chosen by us, so not to say, oh, you know, we should we should tell these people they should meet, but to allow them to meet each other. Um, so what my list is is it's a very simple kind of setup um, where you you have a rollover menu at the top, and it says add URL, and so you can add you know any URL. This was released to a, a context of artists, so. Uh, most of the URLs added are artistic ones, but you can add any URL if you, if you want to, anything in, in, in the internet. Um, and what happens is, once this URL is added to the database, uh, it's, it's, it becomes part of a long list of, of URLs that we have, and the script that John wrote uh, goes over uh, every image on that website and takes it and adds that to another database. These images are all then spit out uh, at random, um, so that there is no kind of like linear understanding or, or, or there's no choice, subjective choice being made uh, curatorially as to what will be shown. It's entirely up to the viewer to add as many of their own URLs as possible to obtain maximum viewership or, or maximum inclusion, I should say, in the, in the process of the stream. Um, so so uh, in this sense, like Jim was saying, this is a kind of response to something uh, like Walker or like Tumblr, which attempts to uh, uh, siphon interest, and this is a, is a chance to uh, expand those or to randomize them uh, in a way that's um, that's indebted to something like Fluxus and it's and it's kind of open uh, randomness. But also, I think when I was thinking about this, I was actually indebted to an exhibition that Laurel uh, curated. And well, I don't know. Should I talk about it? Or, do you want me to talk about it? I don't know. It's cooler if you have it. Mean, it's cooler if I okay, like a fan. Well, I am a fan. I'm a big fan of it. Um, okay, I, I kind of, I might mess up the title, but it was, I is it possible to take a photograph of New Jersey wherever you are in the world? Regardless. Regardless. Of where I can okay. pull up some images. Yeah, 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 please do. So, is it, the, the web, or the um, exhibition, and Laurel organized it, I suppose you could say, yeah. uh, was called, is it possible to take a photograph of New Jersey regardless of where you are in the world? And, what that was like 2008 or something? 2008. 2008, 2007? Yeah, one of those. Okay. I remember. I think 2008. Something like that. But it was really great, and, and it influenced me a lot. I was, I was doing something much different then. Um, but the model that Laurel chose for how to organize this exhibition had a, had a really great impact on me. And um, what she did was she kind of sent out this proposition uh, on the internet through her, her blog, I Heart Photograph. And uh, it was an open call for artists to you know, uh, submit any image they wanted to of New Jersey. And you know they could represent it however they chose, um, and no matter what, Laurel would include it in the exhibition. So the final result was a, theory, a series of like hundreds or thousands of images, uh, all submitted by people from the internet, um, and none of them were excluded. I thought that was a really uh, great kind of model for how to organize an exhibition uh, that would include such a wide range of of, of uh, approaches and and um, to kind of eliminate some of the problems of curatorial subjectivity, but I don't know, maybe Laurel should talk a little bit. <laughs> Laurel will talk a little bit.